Good morning and happy Sabbath to one and all. It's a privilege to be here. It's a privilege to uh, once again see some of your faces. And as you have, um, as you already know, I've had the interview. You know a little bit about me and I look forward to getting to know you a little bit better as well. I just want to welcome our visitors, anyone who is not normally with us today. I just hope that you're blessed as we go through our service as well. And I just wanna let you know something, that although this is the first time that I'm speaking, although this is the first time that um, you're hearing my voice in a sermon, I am not a visitor. So if you, you try to say that I'm a visitor, I will, I will hold my hands up and say, no, 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 I'm a part of this family here at Cardinal Church and please adopt me. Please adopt me where possible. But at this time, I'm going to say a word of prayer prior to going into the sermon for today. So pray with me, please. Our Father and our God, we are so grateful for your presence, which never leaves us. And as we are here today, I pray that your presence will, your spirit will be with each and every person, that you will guide our hearts and minds and our focus unto you and help us to remember and who you are and what you have done. So please be with us is my prayer in Jesus name. Amen. Today is the 30th of January. We're almost a month through this year. And this year, I don't call this year 2021. I call this year 2020 part B. And I'm doing that because in 2020, many of us did not have the best of years. In fact, during this time, there were many new phrases that came into our vocabulary. Pandemic, this unprecedented times to name but two. Once again, we're in a national lockdown and this has been challenging, no doubt for many of us. And because of all of these things mixed together, I don't like to look at this year as 2021. And in fact, what I actually do long for is I long for the day that 2021 really begins. And when is that day, you may ask? Because in my mind, 2021 really begins when lockdown is lifted and the world is open and everything is back to, I would like to say, normal. And when the world is reopened and everything is normal, I look forward to the day when I can finally meet you all face to face, when I can finally see you all my family. And that will be a wonderful time. And by God's grace, I cannot wait for the day when the churches are opened, our, our houses can be opened, we can see each other, we can freely mingle. But one thing that I would also like to do when lockdown is lifted by the grace of God, when things are opened by the grace of God, I would like to go on holiday. I don't know about you, but that is something that I would like to do. I would like to go on holiday. And right now I think that many of us, if not all of us, are in need of some kind of holiday. But let's just cast our minds back just to, uh, a short time, maybe a year ago or a year and a half ago, when we could freely travel. We remember that being on holiday and being away from home, packing our bags and leaving home to go to that destination was a wonderful thing. So where is the best place you have ever visited on holiday? Now I've been to a few places. I have to say, I've never been to the continent of Africa or Australia or the Far East. And these are some places that I would like to go. I would like to pack my bags, leave home and go to these destinations. I have been to a few places myself. I've been to the Caribbean. I've been to many places in Europe and America. And I love to, to pack my bags and travel away from home. Because being away from home, especially in this context, can be a wonderful thing. Being away from home can be a wonderful experience. But not always. 
Our scripture reading was taken from the book of Re Revelation. And Revelation was written by a man whose name was John. And John, he was away from home when he wrote this particular book. In fact, he was more than away from home. He was on a prison island. He was on the Isle of Patmos. So Patmos, it was a small rock and it was a barren area where many criminals were sent to serve out their prison terms in, in harsh conditions. Now this was John's life. So here we see that John knew what it was to be socially isolated because social distancing was his reality. On this cold and dark prison island, Jesus, he comes and he appears to John. And Jesus, what he does is he, in this cold, on cold and dark prison island, he gives John a vision of the future. And so, so I, I just imagine John preparing to receive this vision from God. And when he prepares to receive this vision from God on this dark prison island, what does he receive from, from Jesus himself? John finds out that things are going to get worse for the people of God. In fact, he finds out that there is going to be persecution. So imagine you're on this island, you're in, you're in a place and you don't necessarily see that you have hope and Jesus comes to tell you something. This Prince of Peace, this noble Prince of Peace comes to tell you something. Perhaps you think he's going to tell and bring good news. But the news that he actually initially brings is about persecution. It's about violence rather than peace. How would you feel about this? But then it continues, it continues in, in Revelation 15 and 16. It talks about the seven last plagues and we know today that plagues and viruses are not good. So it continues in Revelation chapter 18 and perhaps at this point, John is becoming a little dejected because it seems as though bad news is coming wave after wave, time after time. Revelation 18 tells us that Babylon is fallen. In other words, there is religious confusion. It's become a place of terrible sin. So we find out there are going to be plagues and torments and weeping and wailing. It sounds terrible. Perhaps at this point, John wants to put down his pen and not write anymore, but things are about to change. Because in Revelation chapter 19, Jesus reveals to John that things are going to get better. Things are going to get much better better. At the beginning of Revelation chapter 19, Jesus reveals that alleluias are going to begin. Now alleluia, it means praise God. Alleluia means praise God. So there are those who are in heaven, the angels, the 24 elders, the four living creatures. They know that salvation is coming to earth and they're saying praise God. And maybe we should ought to get into that same mindset as well because they know that a place is coming where there will be no more terrible things happening. There will be no more flooding because waters have burst their banks. There will be no more racism and people will no longer have to take a knee because of that. There'll be no more issues at work, no more bullying at school because salvation is coming to the earth. God's people are going to be saved. God's people are going to be saved, saved from the things that they're going through now, short COVID and long COVID and other things which we don't talk about so much today, the cancers, the diabetes, the, the heart failures. But we're not going to be saved from just the illnesses that we have now, not just from the illnesses that, we, that plague our bodies, not just from racism, not just from isolation that we currently experience. But John is saying, Babylon, or religious confusion is to be destroyed. Instead of confusion, there will be clarity of what is right and what is wrong. Instead of violence, there will be peace, as we talked about this morning in our lesson. There is, instead of separation, there will be unbroken, perfect relationship. In short, God is coming back for his people. And then in Revelation chapter 19, Jesus comes to his people and he takes his people with him. 
Fast forwarding to Revelation chapter 20, in verse 6, it says that God's people will reign with him. So God has taken his people to heaven, and in heaven they are going to be reigning with him. And that doesn't mean we're going to be sitting there and pointing and telling people what to do. There is something else planned for our reign in heaven with God. But the fact is that God wants us to reign with him. We are princes and princesses. We are children of God. And he, there is nothing better to him than giving away what he has to those that are a part of his family. Revelation chapter 20, verse 6, states that there is blessing in being in this resurrection. Here we see a first resurrection has taken place for the people of God. These people of God will be in heaven with God himself. These people of God will be reigning with God. Now this first resurrection is good. But is there something better? We still learn in Revelation chapter 20 about what is happening on the earth while we are reigning in heaven. So Satan is bound on earth for a thousand years and while we are reigning in heaven, we are not just sitting there as I said before, but while in heaven the saints are judging, asking questions about perhaps why their loved ones are not in heaven or why sisters so-and-so or brother so-and-so is here because of, and you can finish that sentence any way that you want to. But there will be questions asked during this first 1,000 years. Now, I know that heaven will be a wonderful place, and many people are looking forward to heaven. There is no doubt about that. But perhaps there will be some anxiety and pain and tears there. I'll come back to that. Maybe there will be some anxiety, pain, and tears there. Heaven is good, but is there something better? Now our reign in heaven, it will last 1000 years. And after that, the last enemy, and the last enemy is death. After that, that will be destroyed. And then we come to Revelation 21, and Revelations chapter 22. I call this the outcome of God or the victory of God. Revelation chapter 21 and verse one. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away also there was no more sea. So this is the, the image that John is seeing right now. He sees a new heaven and a new earth, and there's no more sea, no more separation, no more having to fly from place to place in order to see those family members who you are so close to but live so far away. If we just jump to Revelation 21 verse 4, and here it said, and God will wipe away every tears from their eyes. When is this taking place? This is taking place after the thousand years in heaven. After the thousand years in heaven, there is a declaration that God shall wipe away every tear from their eye. And this is the point where there'll be no more death or sorrow or crying or no more pain. I believe that we are all looking forward to that time where there will be no more death or sorrow or crying. For me, 2020, part of it was not the best of years. Yes, there were some good things happened, but some not so good things happened. And I say that and I, I'm understating. Because one of the things that happened to me last year was I had a niece 14 years old who died. It wasn't COVID, but it was during the time period of COVID and it happened so suddenly. And when somebody, something like that happens to you, it, it really affects you from the core. Death is a terrible thing. But here it's saying that there, is, there will be no more tears and no more pain and no more crying because these things will have passed away. It is mentioned only after the thousand years in heaven that there shall be no more death. Only after the thousand years. 
It is mentioned only after the thousand years that God will wipe away all tears on the earth made new. It's only after the thousand years that there will be no more sorrow or crying. So there may well be tears in heaven, but they are all wiped away on the earth made new. Friends, there is no more pain on the earth made new. Now, no more pain is good, but is there something better? If we go into Revelation chapter 22, Revelation 22 begins with John being shown a pure river of water, a pure body of water. Now, perhaps many of us have seen beautiful bodies of water. Maybe you've seen the picturesque scenes of Lake Malawi or Lake Kariba. Maybe you've seen the Zambezi River or maybe even the Black River in Jamaica. But as beautiful as these bodies of water are, as beautiful as these lakes and rivers are, the river of life is better. It's even better than the river Don. There are incredible sights to see there. Now, John also paints the picture of the throne of God and the Lamb. And this is where the, the water of life is coming from. Revelation 22, verse 2, it talks, ab it talks about this tree of life. And it says, in the middle of the street on either side of the river is the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, yielding its fruit every month. I just want to pause for a moment and ask you a question. What is your favorite fruit? Now, some people will say apples and some people will say oranges or grapes or bananas. But my favorite fruit is the mango. It is head and shoulders better than any other fruit that is out there. And if you disagree with me, well, that's fine. But know that I am correct. But then I imagine this tree, this tree of life. And it has one tree every month growing from it. And then I imagine the tastes of the fruit from this tree. And no doubt in my mind, it tastes better than mango or whatever your favorite fruit may be. This sounds wonderful to me. Also in this place, there shall be no more curse. And what is this curse? This curse is the curse of death, the thing that was never meant to exist. I just imagine that it is wonderful there. The water would be extremely good and cooling and refreshing. The tree of life would be absolutely wonderful and the taste of those, those delicious fruit would be delightful. And also it is fantastic that there is no more death there. All of these things are good, but is there something better? Now I'm looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth. And one of the things I'll, I'm looking forward to be able to do is understand people no matter what language they are speaking. Whether it's Shona, Ndebele, Chichewa, Polish, Mandarin, Spanish, even Yorkshire, no matter what language people are speaking, I will be able to understand. But this incredible place, it doesn't stop there. Sometimes I use my imagination and I imagine the place that Jesus has prepared for me as John wrote in John chapter 14. Now, I used to tell people about this big, magnificent house that I would have. Its garden would be beautiful. The river would just be there glistening in the distance. There would be a mountain to one side and a valley to the other. It would be an absolutely incredible place. And of course, the centerpiece of the garden that I would have would be a mango tree. And in this garden, there would be no social distancing. Anyone can come around. Anyone can take from the mango tree. And this experience would be absolutely incredible. And, and God has said that he, he wants to build a house for us all, a mansion for us all. Now, a house built for you is good. And if somebody came to you today and said that they wanted to build a house for you right now, you may say, praise the Lord for his blessings. 
but God is trying to build a better house for us, a permanent house for us where we don't have to fix anything and a house built for me. Now that is good. But is there something better? One of my favorite authors, Ellen White, she says this. And when she's talking about heaven, she says, and I saw another field full of all kinds of flowers. And as I plucked them, I cried out, they will never fade. Next, I saw a field of tall grass, most glorious to behold. She continues, then we entered a field full of all kinds of beasts, the lion, the lamb, the leopard, and the wolf, all together in perfect union. Now nature, that sounds incredible. And I want to experience that because I think that would be breathtaking considering how we see nature today. Having, to, having the view of all of those things dancing in the wind, that would be better than any garden, any park or any allotment that we have here. The sounds, the sight, the nature, they would be incredible. But is there something better? Let's go back to Revelation chapter 21, because I believe that something interesting and the point actually happens in verse three. And it says, I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, now, this is the first thing that is said as the city is descending. So this must be important. And it says, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them. They shall be his people. God himself will be there. As the city comes down to the new earth, this is the first thing that is said. This is the first thing that is, that is announced. I imagine trumpets and a fanfare, this is, something which is incredibly important. If we go to verse seven, it says this, he who overcomes shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son or my daughter. So God is calling us his sons and daughters. During this time, we will inherit incredible things. We know that there are going to be no more tears, no more pain, no more death, and these things are good. We know the water of life and the tree of life will be there and its fruits will be good. There we will own our own home without having to pay a mortgage, and that will be good. There will be no more social distancing or isolation. That will be good. But there will be something better. And these two verses, verse 3 and verse 7, really tell us what that thing is. The something better is the fact that Jesus will be there. God himself will be with us. He will tabernacle with us. He will be sitting there face to face with us. He will be so close that he will be able to wipe the tears away from our, our faces as we have been upset by the woes of this world. And it makes me think, is no pain and no more tears and no more crying and a huge house, is that enough without God? And I say this, eternity without God is not worth it. The fact that my God is there is the best thing that I could ask for. Because upon reflection, it's not what I get that is the most important thing, but who will be there? To put it another way, I would rather live with my wife in, in a box than perhaps some other people in a mansion because eternity with the wrong person would be terrible. And at this time, when Jesus is there, he will call me son, and he will call us sons and daughters. And to be honest, that's enough for me, because this is the true meaning of heaven, or more specifically, this is the true meaning of the new earth for me. 
that God is there and he calls me his child. Heaven for me is not about the stuff and the things, the houses or the trees. It's about the fact that Jesus will be there and that's enough for me. I imagine John sitting there away from home writing these wonderful things that he has just heard from God. He, read, he, wrote, he wrote those things down and as he wrote those things down, maybe he had in mind that people in the future would need some encouragement. So from the stillness of his isolation, John listened to God. From the stillness of his isolation, John, John reacted to what God has said and gave us this book. John spent time in the stillness and in the isolation. Will we do the same? And will we listen to God as we are in this stillness and isolation? And John pens this book, this beautiful book called Revelation. And John's revelation tells us about houses and rivers and eternal life. Yes, it tells us about all of these things, but his real focus, his real focus is that God will be there. Emmanuel, God is with us. And for me, if my God is there, that is enough for me because he is something better. And I would like others to experience that something better. Would you like to be there too? Just in concluding, heaven for me is not about the things that we get, the houses, the, the trees or anything like that. In fact, it's not truly about heaven, but it's about the earth made new where we see this new Jerusalem coming down. And that is the place that we shall call home. But even the new Jerusalem and its incredible foundations are not the point. The point is that Jesus will be there and he'll be there face to face. And in the words of a song written by a man called Leonardo Gonzalez, I just want to be there. I just want to be there. To be at my Jesus feet, I want to be there. I don't care about the crown or the color of the gown as long as Jesus is in town. I want to be there. Because Jesus is the focus of heaven. And Jesus, like he did to John, he wants to reveal himself to you today. So I, I plead with you, get close to him today. And when we get close to him today, his promise to us is that we will be with him in his presence for eternity. And with him, the new heaven and the new earth, <clears throat> and the new earth will be the best place you have ever been to, better than any holiday. And that is a home you would not want to be away from, perhaps at contrast from where we are today. So there are many things that God is promise, promising us, but the most important thing, the something better is Jesus himself. He wants us to know that he is there and he will always be there and he wants to tabernacle, he wants to be with, he wants to walk with us. Do you want to walk with him? When it comes to eternity, John ultimately is saying, Jesus is the best thing that can happen to us, better than all of those other things. And Jesus is my something better. Won't you make him your something better too? And my prayer for us, for each and every one of us to here today and our friends and our family is that Jesus is our something better. <laughs>